Ask Justin a question on the street yesterday. He just kind of goes, yeah. <laughs> they started laughing. I'm like, Ew. Ew. oh, that's right. Yeah, what, what was, yeah, something was going on. I said, so you, what are you, lonely? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> that's right, Kenny left them all alone on the other side of the street, man, to fend for himself. Then he came over. I said, what's going on? What are you, lonely? Yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious, man. <laughs> the ark is full. We have no more room, man. It's pretty, pretty funny, man. Oh, thirteen one. When Ephraim spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. But when he offended in Baal, he died. Good, good picture. Last week we saw of humility. That's uh, that's a good way to approach the Lord in any way, shape, or form. As you heard in Sunday school, very good lesson on how to approach other people. That's hard to do, man. It's almost like they force you into being proud. It is, man, either cutting you off or not signaling. It's like they know that not signaling drives me insane. And then Karen's just over in the passenger seat going, they know that not signaling drives you insane. And she goes, yeah, that's the devil. And I said, you're the devil. <laughs> Verse number two. Oh, the woman thou gave, and the woman thou gavest me, and, and now they sin more and more, and have made them molten images of their silver and idols according to their own understanding. All of it, the work of the craftsman. That's a very good um, concordance over in Acts 19. Remember, uh, making statues and all that stuff, silversmiths and all that crazy stuff for Diana. Right? They say of them, uh, they say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss, kiss the calves. We looked at that. Therefore, uh, they shall be as the morning cloud and as the early dew that passes away as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor and as the smoke out of the chimney. Yet I am the Lord thy God from the land of Egypt. Now shalt know no God but me, for there's no Savior beside me. I did know thee in the wilderness, in the land of great drought. According to their pastors, so were they filled. They were filled, and their heart was exalted. Therefore have they forgotten me. Therefore I will be unto them as a lion, as a leopard by the way will I observe them. I will meet them as a bear that is bereaved of her whelps, and will rend the call of their heart, and there will I devour them like a lion. The wild beasts shall tear them. Thank you again, Father, for the opportunity to look into your Bible. Thank you that it is holy, it is true, it is just, it's pure. Beyond anything, Father, on the face of this earth or ever will be, thank you, Father, that you've magnified above all your name. And then, Father, uh, it is the word of a king, and I thank you for that. Uh, please help us to have ears tonight to hear, and, and a willing heart, a loving heart, Father, to serve you. You've been, Father, you've been so kind to me personally. You've been so good to me personally. Uh, I am a, I'm a debtor to you, Father, and I thank you for that. And I'm a debtor to others to get them the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you and praise you, Father, for the night tonight. Pray you bless it and be honored and glorified in Christ's name. Amen. All right, verse number three says, Therefore they shall be as the morning cloud, and as they early do, that pass away, as the chaff that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor, and as a smoke out of the chimney. So you got morning cloud, early dew, chaff, and smoke. Sounds like a bunch of Indian names on the reservation, but it's really not. It's the brevity of their glory. It's the brevity of what's going on here. If you can think about the dew in the morning, if you can think about a cloud or smoke that rises, even in a great fire, you give it a day or two, it goes away. I think Mount St. Helens back in the day, early 80s, that smoke lasted for, I don't know, weeks and months. It actually made its way back east and all that, but eventually it dissipated. So God's trying to say here is all this stuff rises up and all these things happen, it's going to go away this quickly. Uh, how many of you are already 30 years old? Paul, it's not a trick question. That's gone, that's gone by quick, has it not? Seriously. I mean, I, we met some of you kids. I mean, literally, I mean, <laughs> wow. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Weird, man. Let's see. I'm, I'm, you think about it now, I mean, uh, Herb was 11. You were, what, 9? 9 or 10? I mean, you girls are just running around, man. Haley was passing out in downtown in the <laughs> Orange Hall, hitting the chairs after song leading. I mean, I, I'm not, can you believe, Estelle? We've known each other for 15 years. Best 15 years of your life. 
three times five. Death, 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 baby. <laughs> Paul, we've known each other too long, man. Just, and, and Mo, no comment. But how long have you been married this year? Eight years or nine? Nine years already. And you've been saved, what, like three weeks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a month, that's right. But no, honestly, think about that. You think about how time has gone by. I said it the other week, time just is, it really is a vapor when your kids are, you're like, look, and Taylor's 30, sorry, kid, you're 33, and Taylor's 30, I mean, where did that time go? I mean, honestly, before we know it, 40's around the corner. I never thought I'd see 57. My dad sure didn't think I was going to see 57. My brother Frank was trying to do everything he could to make sure I didn't make it to 57. But I mean, where did that time, I'm going to be 60 in three years. That's just kind of like, where'd that time go? But he's saying the same thing here in the book of Hosea. He's saying it's like the morning cloud, early dew, chaff, and smoke. It goes by so quickly. And folks, honestly, the wicked are not going to have their rule and reign on this earth forever. Uh, the Baal worshipers, the Ashtoreth worshipers, the, the Zoroasters and all that, Buddha, Muhammad, all that stuff, they're not going to have forever. It just seems like forever when you're going through it. But it really is like a smoke and the cloud and all that stuff. Go over me to Jude, please. Jude. Book of Jude. Book of Jude. It's just... It, it, it just seems like when you're actually going through it, and I, again, I don't care. You vote or don't vote. I seriously don't. We're not political. Oh, excuse me. I'm not political. I don't care what you do. We're not having it in this church. We're not bringing it up. Not gonna, I don't care. I just not, a, not my gig, man. But doesn't it, when your wrong candidate gets in or who you perceive to be your wrong candidate gets in, doesn't it seem like those four years are horrible? And when, when Barack Obama was in for eight years, you thought the Antichrist was here, man. That's weird, man. And then you look back and you're like, wow, Barack Obama, when's the last time he was president? 2000, was it 8, 12? Was it 12? He left office in 16. He left, okay, so he got two terms though. So, but okay, so that's eight years ago. I mean, where'd that time go? Folks, as, as bad as it seemingly gets, you're going to look back once you get to glory and look back at this and go, wow, that was a vapor. That was a cloud. That was dust. That was just, it just, it did, it did, you know, and all the stuff that I put stock into it, a little bit of a lesson on this verse is all the stuff you put stock in now, it's not going to mean anything when you hit later in your life, and it's certainly not going to mean anything when you hit eternity unless it has something to do with spiritual things. And all the stuff we worry about and fret about, I'm not saying they're not worthy of praying for you. You ought to pray for everything and all that stuff. But, you know, you worry about your kids growing up and your kids getting sick and your being, kids being exposed to this and who are they going to be friend? Are they going to go to school and are they going to go to college and all that stuff? And before you know it, you're like, wow, I worried about all that stuff and it seemed to work itself out. And what's that going to matter when you get to 70, 80 years and all that stuff? Kenny, yeah, you better be worried about it, man. <laughs> But before you know it, your child, Lord willing, child's born, before you know it, the kid's going to be 10, 15 years old, man. You're going to be like, where did, that, where, where did all the stress and strain go of the caring of that child? It's gone, man. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's weird. I mean, you're still going to get sick with bacon afterwards, but don't worry, yes, no, it's <laughs> probably the lasting, probably the lasting effect of Kenny on you. So, <laughs> speaking of Kenny, get verses 8 through 13, please, Jude. Jude 8 through 13, please. <laughs> Likewise, also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, yep. despise dominion, and speak evil of dainties. Yet Michael, the archangel, mm -hmm. contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts and those things they call mm -hmm. themselves, woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran and ran greedily mm -hmm. after the heir of Balaam <coughs> for a reward and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. These are spots in your feast of ch of charity. When they feast with mm -hmm. you, feeding themselves without fear. Now look at how all that evil stuff about them, all those evil characteristics and evil, they're natural brute beasts, they're how horrible and wicked they are, and look what God says they are. Cl clouds. The feast with you. Yeah. Clouds they are without water, carried about with of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. 
raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars, to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness for us. As horrible as those folks are, those natural people, it's horrible. They're just raging waves and the sea calms down. The foam comes in, foam comes out. Tide comes in, times go. It, 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 they're, they're just going to be clouds without water. Before you know it, they're gone. Well, I can't believe what the Muslims are doing. I can't believe all this wickedness in Israel. I, folks, in God's comparison and in God's viewpoint, this stuff is nothing. It's hard when you're going through it, when you're going through the storm, but God says when you look back, it's going to be smoke and cloud and chaff, and it's going to be like nothing ever even took place. I, I can't even imagine what that's going to be like when God wipes away all tears. And He says, it is done. It's all, and there's time no more. Imagine not being late for church. I, I, I mean... <laughs> Bert's looking over at that, that hellfire and brimstone. He knows, he knows it's going No, I, honestly, I'm, I'm like, okay, we got to go. We got to go. It's 4.15. Okay, get dressed. It's 4.20. Okay, we got on. And then before you know it, you're like, it's 20 to 5. It's 11 minutes down there if everything works out right. It's 11 minutes if everything works out right and my little switch thing for the green light is working properly. And there's no accent or any of that stuff outside of square pizza, red square pizza, whatever. That. What's that place you built, Jonathan? Square peg, sorry, square peg piece and all that stuff. And it, massive accident down there. You got to go all the way up and around and all that stuff. And, and imagine not being late, man. Imagine not having to worry about time. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, you're going to laugh at this, but the times we have together as a church family, the times you have with your family and that you have them over, and don't you wish it could go a little bit longer? Yeah. And you, you remember those times and you're like, wow, man, before you know it. It's like 10 o'clock at night. I gotta get going, man. Soup bowl Sunday. Bert's over there eating shrimp. He's like a madman. <laughs> and they're not, they're not multiplying like the loaves and fishes like he hoped. And he's just he's throwing the tails and not regenerating, man, and all that stuff. And then before you know it, you're like, wow, man, that was a good time, man. But that, that four, four and a half hour, there's gonna be a time where all this is gonna, you're gonna look back and go, wow, what a vapor, what a smoke. And now we have, we have all the eternity together. <laughs> yeah, man, can't look, forward, can't look forward to it enough, man. All right, Proverbs chapter 25. That the, those 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 uh, clouds without water and all that stuff. That's a really interesting phrase in your King James Bible. Twenty five of Proverbs, please. I love this. I love this verse, man. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not me. Uh, Twenty five fourteen. Estiana, go ahead, please. <laughs> what a verse, man! All the noise, all the bluster. Where's the rain, bro? All you did was run your mouth. And I have a gift. God gave me a gift. Well, is there anything being produced to that? Or is it just a lot of noise and a lot of commotion and all that stuff? And before you know it, it's gone. We got a massive storm here yesterday. I don't know. Did you guys get it over in your neck of the woods? Yeah, it, it, it came down. It was, it was pretty vicious, man. But I'm like, okay, for 40 minutes, it was just nonstop sheets of rain. And then it's gone and then it's sunny out. The stuff that happens, man. Oh, these guys, man, these guys that make all these, uh, these silver shrines, we've got to kiss the calves, and look at all this false worship and all. I can't believe it. they got another mosque up in Hartford, and they're putting on. Folks, it's, it's wind. It's chaff. It's smoke. It's going to go away. It's not going to be evil and wicked forever. Maybe it'll increase your prayer life for the Lord to come back in the clouds. Lord, would, Lord, would, would you send your son back in the clouds today for us? Would you send him back today? Today would be a good day. I know you got plans and all that. I know you're thinking. But what is there really that I have to hold on to that Jesus Christ appearing in the clouds wouldn't take care of? It's a crazy thing, man. I, I, I know, man, you're, you're thinking. I, I get it. <laughs> you got a kid on the way and all that stuff. You're like, man, I'd like to see that kid grow up. And then, yeah. I know. You get confronted with stuff because life intersects with Jesus Christ. And you're like, man, I really love Jesus until life hits that point where... Mm. And that could be with anything. School, I want to get my degree, man. Want... Yeah, but wouldn't it be just better to go home to glory and stop sinning, man, and see your Savior for the rest of eternity? Or maybe it wouldn't. Maybe you'd like to stay here a little bit longer. Maybe you're the ones going through the tribulation period. All right, Job 21. Job 21. And I know we're all at different stages of our life. I get it. But, I mean, there shouldn't be anything stopping you from wanting to go home to glory, man. Just get out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Proverbs 21, and not just for the sake of me doing wicked, evil things. I just want to see my Savior. I just want to get out of here, man. 
2115. Brother Pauly, can you get 15, please, through 18? Remember, he said morning cloud, early dew, chaff, smoke. Go ahead. Job, right? Uh, yes, Job 21, 15 through 18. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? Mm. Lo, their good is not in their hands. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? Mm. How oft cometh the destruction upon them? God distributed sorrow in his anger. Oh. They are as stubble before the Look wind. at this. You got stubble, wind, chaff, and storm all in one verse, man. Folks, the wicked aren't always going to be, man. Jesus Christ is coming back to set up his kingdom. He is. It just seems like, wow, they've been talking about... I mean, don't, don't fall into the trap of the Second Peter chapter 3 people. Where are the, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, this is all you guys have been saying. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Rapture's going to happen. Coming. You're going to get out of here. Blah, blah, blah. He's going to come. Well, when's it going to happen? And then those are, scoff, those are scoffers and doubters, folks. I don't want to be in that, in that league. Here's something for you. If, you. if the Lord doesn't come for you, you might die tomorrow and go home to glory if you're saved. Are you ready to die? Well, the Lord's coming. The Lord's coming. Yeah, are you ready to take your last breath and go off to glory? Honestly, I'm not. I'm ready to go home to heaven, but I, I'm, uh, I, I fear I'm lacking at the judgment seat of Christ. I'd like a little more time to try, try and reverse the wrongs. I know the wrongs are already done. They're done. They're accounted for. Uh, those who have been invested in a bad field. But I, the one thing keeping me back from, probably the only thing keeping me back from wanting to go to glory is to have a little more time to make some, make some things right with the Lord and do something for Him that actually would count. You say, haven't you done stuff before? Yeah, but like I preached this morning, maybe that prodigal thing, and the Lord said, yeah, you can have it now, man, but you don't have anything reserved up in glory. I'd like to have something up there, not just for reward's sake, but to actually st well, probably hit the deck in front of your Savior and say, I, I did what I could with what you gave me. And he says, stand up, man. You did a good job. That'll be worth everything, man. So I'd like a little more time to get some things right, man. I really would. That, that's the one part holding me back from just saying, let's go. Even though I do pray for the Lord to come in the clouds and get us out of here. Go to Psalm 35. Psalm 35. I won't, I won't forget you tonight, Mackenzie. I forgot you the other night, but that's okay. I know you're weeping on the way home. <laughs> Psalm, Psalm 35, but we got to go to Mo, Alyssa first. 35, 1 through 5 there, please. Plead my case, my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. What do you got, Bert's Bible? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Psalm 35, Psalm 35. Plead my cause, O Lord. Don't be all weepy about it, Mo. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, I got to do this someday. <laughs> oh, the first day you came in there, I said, you can go right now. <laughs> you can leave Paul behind, though, for a little bit. And Benny. And maybe Maddie on good days. Anyway, go ahead. Psalm of David. <laughs> Come, the Lord, the son that strives with me. Fight against him that fight against me. Take hold of my of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Yeah, amen. Draw out all amen. Look at this one. I don't know how to describe that chaff, man, but that thing is going to be destroyed, burnt up, and just gotten rid of. Oh, man, I, man it just seems like the wicked out, out, outweigh the righteous. And wow, man, those guys that milled, built all those calves that we're supposed to kiss and worship and all. Man, it just seems like there's more Catholics and Muslims and Buddhists than us. Uh, well, in 2 Kings 6, Lord, would you open his eyes and... When Gehazi looked, he goes, there's definitely more with us <laughs> than there are with them. It just seems like it's not happening quick enough. But one day, and I don't even know how, I, knowing the Lord, if the rapture's in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, I, believe this, I, I don't believe it's going to be a long, drawn-out thing. The burying of the bodies in the millennial kingdom is a, is a drawn-out thing. But I think, I mean, all he has to do is say one word, the sword goes out of his mouth and the blood flies. So I notice he wait till they all mount up with their, 
<laughs> their plowshares into swords, and they're like, let's fight, and he just goes, die. <laughs> they all explode. I don't know, but it's like chaff. It's like this little, the little stuff. You take the wheat and throw the wheat up in the air, and the chaff falls down, and it's just worthless. It's tiny. It's small. It's unfruitful. can't be reproduced, and it just blows away. That's how quickly 200 million soldiers are going to go away and everybody else gathered over there. It's like chaff, a cloud, morning dew. Uh, oh, man, the grass is awful wet this morning. Yeah, by 8, 30, 9 o'clock, it's gone. That's how quick the wicked are going to disappear. All those idol worshipers and all that stuff. You say, that, that, that brings me home. I'm, today, I'm not wishing that on Miami. I want to see them get saved so they don't have to be part of this. Because if they are part of this, that means my brother who's lost, my sister who's lost, my sister-in-law who's lost, and all the cousins and all that stuff, they're going to die and go to hell. So I'd like the Lord to delay. I mean, it, it's such a spiritual conundrum, man. It's crazy. Isaiah chapter 5. We were actually talking about that on Tuesday night with, with James a little bit. And imagine if the Lord had come and taken us and raptured us out. He wouldn't have been saved. You, you think about that. And I know that's the, you know, you want to see the Lord. You want to maybe do some more things for Him to have the judgment seat of Christ. But, you know, is it selfish? Yes, because I want to see the Lord. But do I want to see the Lord for the right reasons so I can get that crown of righteousness? And, and you know, God, would you just destroy all the wicked like chaff in the morning doing the smoke and all that stuff? Yeah, but then you think about, wow, if he comes, I got some loved ones and some co-workers and stuff that are lost without Christ. Yeah. Now, I know that's not going to stop him, and I know they had free choice. I understand that. And I know they have their own account. I get it. I'm just, that's just the humanistic side of me saying, you know what? Man, Lord, maybe, maybe see a bunch of them saved. I mean, not those guys saved, but these guys saved and then come back. It's weird like that. It's weird like that. Um, you, you think about your family members that are lost without Christ, and the Lord comes. They're going to go into a time... Strong delusion, gospel changes, no body of Christ, no sealing into the day of redemption. Those gospel tracts will be useless. Interesting. Try to get them saved quick. And, and Lord, could you kind of like combo it? Can everybody get saved at once? I want saved. And then can the trumpet sound? Can we work it that way? Because this thing's going to happen in the instant. The chaff, the smoke, the early dude, they're going to be wiped out. Go to Isaiah chapter 5. If I didn't say so earlier, Mackenzie, Isaiah 5. 20 through 25, please. <clears throat> If you don't see that now in our society, I don't, I don't know if you've got spiritual blinders on or what, man. People are calling evil good and good evil left and right. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. There you go. Thank you. Therefore, as the fire, verse 24, devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go. It's not, it's not going not to last. Matthew chapter 3, please. Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3. Brother Bob, can you get Matthew 3, please? Common, common passage. Common passage, Matthew 3. Brother Bob, when you get there, can you read 7 through 12, please? John, uh, Matthew 3, 7 through 12. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. I am not worthy to bear. He also shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose hand is in his hand, and will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat unto the garner, but will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. Amen. So you know what the picture is. Take the wheat, throw it up, and get, let the wind separate the wheat from the chaff. Chaff and wheat, separate the wheat, and guess what you do with the chaff? Burn it up. I'll say this again because we're in the passage. I know you're getting worn out with me saying it. The baptism of fire is not a good thing. That's absolutely false. It's a terrible teaching that you get from Acts 2 where they try to say that cloven tongues of fire. It doesn't say that. It says like as of fire. You are not going to be surviving the baptism of fire and with fire, with fire unquenchable that Jesus Christ brings to this earth. Uh, the last judgment of the wicked that are not found in the book of life is called what in, in Revelation 20? What's that place called? The lake of fire. You'll get baptized all right in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone. So he says the Holy Ghost and with fire are two distinct separate baptisms located in that verse. I actually have a third one there, John's baptism, to manifest Christ to Israel. There's three, and he had a, a, a throw-go, not a bow go All right, Psalm chapter 68. Psalm 68, please. Uh, Jonathan, if you could. Speaking of bolo, here we go, Psalm 68. He asked me before, he says, does bolo count as a tie? And I'm like, <laughs> does that really count as a tie in the pulpit? Jonathan, come on. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I, I did. If you got Paulie backing you up on something smart. He's just starting early. I know. Imagine if you become his direct supervisor. That's the new prayer right there. Not, not only that God gives Jonathan that job to have a good witness test for Jesus Christ, but that Paulie can be Pharaoh. <laughs> Over Israel. Yeah. Well, you'll see the guys you work with are Helen Keller. Um, <laughs> I gotta stop, man. I gotta grow up, man. That's not gonna happen. Anyway, Psalm 68. Dad, that's funny stuff. I don't care how cold you are. That's funny over there. Psalm 68. Laughter makes you get warmer, Deb. Psalm 68, Brother Jonathan, get verses 1 and 2, please. And then we'll move on to know God but me. There's no Savior beside me. To the chief musician, a psalm or song of David. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Mm -hmm. Let them also that hate him flee before him. Look at this. As smoke is driven away, so <laughs> drive away. As wax melted before the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Uh, you know what's really cool? The, like smoke, the wicked get driven away. How does the Lord come up here to Ezekiel and to Job and a whirlwind? And that whirlwind, just blow that smoke away, man. Run in your mouth all that smoke, and then here comes Jesus Christ. And you're like, oh, man, the mountains and hills, they better fall on us. Man, here, oh, whoa. he's not dead? We thought we killed him. He's not a babe in a manger? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's, that's the commander of the Lord. That's the captain of the Lord's army up there, buddy. Man. And it, just like the smoke is driven away, that's what the wicked are going to do at the presence of the Lord. All right, Psalm 82. Well, right here. He says in verse number 4 of Hosea 13, No God but me, for there is no Savior beside me. You think, well, that's pretty simple. Who doesn't know that? Well, and again, man, if you, if you watch, well, I'm not going to get all over you, man. I've seen the Avengers, even though the Lord is my Avenger. I've seen Marvel, even though no Marvel. I mean, we've seen all, the, all those things. But have you noticed the rise in movies the last probably 10, 10 years in particular? Okay, maybe 10 to 15 years where the amount of Thors and Hulks and, you know, all these men that are gods and fantasy characters from other realms... You can't tell me that's not part of the whole gig, man. I mean, uh, I, now Yoda, that's, Yoda's a prophet. He's an 800-year-old prophet. He worked with Methuselah. But I mean, you know, uh, 
even his head, man, that's shaped like that pentagram and all that, and he's a guy that's trained all the Jedis, and he has the Force and all that, and George Lucas, when he made that movie, had, like, he was Methodist, <laughs> Rosicrucianism. He had, like, all Capino gland. He had, like, 50 different religions just to come in there, and it's a Force and all that. They're, they're gearing you towards the guy that's going to sit in the temple one day and say that he is God. In fact, what's he called over in Daniel chapter 11? Anybody know what he's called over in Daniel 11? He's the, he's the what? Go ahead, Brother Burke. God of forces. God of forces. That's right from Obi-Wan Kenobi, if you don't didn't get it. He's called the God of forces, and it's with a capital G there. Oh, that's a mistranslation, brothers. A guy told me up in Islam Meadow one time. I said, no, it's not, because he sitteth in the temple showing himself that he is... Pe yeah, capital G. Like capital W for that wicked. It's a persona. It's a person. He really is trying to be God. He's trying to actually... Antichrist is not just directly opposite. It's in the place of. He's an imitation of our God and of our King and you know, the God of forces and all that stuff. And you've seen an uprise and uptick and all this you know, gods and realms and magic. I mean, it's, it's more so now than... And I, honestly, I, watch every, I don't care, man. But I mean, it's just the rise of all this is just prepping you for lightning bolts from heaven and all kinds of stuff. And it's just weird, man. I like Palpatine. That, that's, my, that's my character right there, buddy. Why wouldn't it be? But what's he control out of his hands? It's lightning. I beheld Satan fall as lightning. You can't tell me that. They're not getting it from a King James. So what I'm saying is they're, they're making gods. And how many times, we said it this morning and while we were preaching, man, well, while I was preaching, while you guys were listening, the, uh, or weeping or whatever it was, the first commandment, you'll have no strange God. Yeah. I'm the Lord. But men make gods, and there are, I do believe there's obviously gods when you're over in Samuel. There's gods come up from the, from the earth when that, she got a surprise that day, boy. <laughs> but look at Psalm 82. This is a classic right here. Uh, Jen, can you get Psalm 82? Read the whole thing, please. A Psalm of Asaph. <clears throat> So when you say Selah, I do know it's a musical. I understand that. But what does Selah doctrinally take you to? Where would it take you to doctrinally? It's the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, the rest. You're going to find tribulation passages before and after that will take you to the millennial. So there are gods on the earth. Who's coming back and who's going to be doing what they're doing? The Genesis 6, Genesis 6 guys are coming back. And there'll be gods all over the place, man. Come on, you can't tell me those, and I haven't seen them all, uh, but you, know, you see the, those sarcophagus of these people that are like 25, 30 feet tall? The, Am the Amorite over in Amos, he's like a cedar tree. He's like bigger than Og. Og's a big dude, man. But you got guys that are like cedar trees. Oh, that's not, re that's not real. You have, uh, what, brother, I don't pick on Brother Bird, but I like to. It's uh, uh, Ancient Aliens. Those guys don't even know what they're doing. They're uncovering what God already said in His book. Easter Island giants, Stonehenge and all that. Oh, you're creepy. No, I believe the King James Bible has all the answers. And God told you there's other gods floating around out there. But there's only one true God. And when He stands in the congregation of the gods, you're going to find out. Now, yeah, my God can beat up your gods. <laughs> Keep on going, please. Now, how do you know these guys are really who they are? The next verse will give you a very good context. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the <laughs> they walk in what, Jennifer? In, uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And what? Darkness was upon the face of the deep. God judged those boys. And then He gives it to them again when the sons of God come down with the daughters of men in Genesis 6. And I didn't believe that. That's a godly line of Seth. You're stupid. Yes. But you'll go home and watch your stinking DVD collection and think that Thor's a real god. But you won't believe the King James Bible when he says there are gods out there. I wiped them out and I'm going to do it again too, by the way. 
Keep on going. Sorry, Jennifer, I'm getting freaked out right now. Go ahead. He, and he told you at the end of verse 5, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. If that doesn't tell you where you're at in Genesis 1, 1, 1, 2, he made it to be inhabited and then it's off kilter? The foundations are out of course? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. He flooded it out. Keep on going, please. Okay, if those are men, why did he say you're going to die like men? You'll die like a man. Now, this has been a crazy thing for me over the years just reading it, because you know the way I, my, my brain kind of rolls a little bit with this. When those, when those devils were kicked out of those men, the, the devil-possessed men of the Gadarenes, what, where, where, what did they do? They entered into... But into what did the, what's the Bible call that? The, this, this, yeah, the water, it's the deep, man. Because what do they really ask him? Are you going to cast us out to the real deep? You're going to die like a man. Men. So if he choked those guys out, they must have seen that first choking out when he drowned them like stinking rats, like men in Genesis. And those pigs go off and they're drowned. What do you think he did with these guys, man? He flooded them out, man. He takes that earth like a footstool and kicks that footstool away. <laughs> right in the water. And there it is bobbing up and down in it. And that flood, man, it, take, it takes care of it. I, I don't know all of it, man, but that's a weird thing. Why does he say you're going to die like men if they're just men? They're not. You're going to die like a man, like getting choked out, like getting drowned out. That's just a theory, just throwing it out there. Man, if you have something better than that, I, I would definitely look at the verses and go through with you, but it's, it's pretty... Okay, so now i got to go to Matthew 8. So I was to, we're not going to do this, Matthew 8, because now it's bothering me because Brother Bird gave me the, the weird quizzical look he gives you. I mean, he always has that, but it was more specific this time. It is the sea, but I'm trying to look. Where's the verse where it says the deep? The one in, uh, the one in 8... Uh, 8.28 of Matthew says, And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gergesenes, there may have two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, so no man might pass by that way. Remember when they used to wear those fierce t-shirts? Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're fierce, all right. That's also 2 Timothy 3.3. 3. That's part of the incontinent fierce, the men in the last age. And behold, they cried out, saying, What have we to do with thee, uh, Jesus, the Son of God? Are thou come hither to torment us before the time? So they know the end judgment. And there was a good way off from them and heard of sw uh, many swine feeding. So those besought, uh, besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. He sent them go when, they're co uh, when they were come out. They went into the herd of swine, and behold, the herd of, uh, herd of swine... ran violently down a sleep place to see him perish in the waters. Everybody's tense right now wondering what I'm going to do, aren't they? He's going to have to dial 911 after that. Okay, let's go over to Mark 5 before you get thrown into the deep. Oh, man. So I'm guessing that was a thunderstorm warning? Really? Wow. It's very bad, Polly. Now I'm going to have to yell at you now. Yeah. Which you... No, it wasn't me. Ha! <laughs> uh, where is that? Um, Mark 5, and they came unto the side of the sea into the country of the uh, Gadarenes. When he was come out of the ship... Immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no not with chains, because he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him. The fetters broken in peace, and neither could any man tame him, lion tamer. And, and, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs, crying, cutting himself stones like the guys in 1 Kings 18, right? The guys that worshipped Baal. And when, they, and when he saw Jesus far off, he ran and worshipped him. That's interesting. Uh, all the devils believed there was a God. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What I would do to Jesus? Okay, come on, unclean spirit. Am I, am I just not a, is it verse 13? It doesn't, it says choked in the sea. I could have sworn out in the deep. Am I, am I just seeing and reading things? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm trying to take you guys. Go to Luke 8. Luke 8's the other one, I believe. I think it's Luke. I'm sorry, does somebody have it? You got it, Deb? Thank you. 
No one ever cared for me like Deborah. <laughs> Look at 831. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. So the deep has to be different than the sea right there. They're going out to the deep one day. Thanks, Dad. That was a very good rescue effort on your part. Thank you. I was drowning. I knew it was somewhere. I just didn't know where. So they'll die like men and fall like one of the prisons. The point being is that when God says there's no other God but me, he means it. He's going to stand in the congregation of the gods one day and say, I'm the true and living God. Now, that being said, and you think I'm running down people's religions, I'm, I'm not. Allah means a God of the gods or a God amongst the gods. That's what that word means. And if you read the history of that, where Allah came from, literally, he's in a cave or in an enclosed area, and there's, there's over 320 gods there. And he gets a revelation that there's one specific dolly, figurine, idol, whatever, that's the God amongst the gods. Well, the problem with that is those are the workmanship of man's hands and the craftsmen of this earth. The true God in eternal life is, is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He's not a God amongst the gods. No, he's the God above all gods. But Israel, for some reason, keeps forgetting that, and, and I do the same thing. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, please. I know we were here before. 1 Corinthians chapter number 8. Uh, Deb, 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 7, please. <clears throat> Brother Kenny preached on this uh, at the nursing home about uh, a good father and having a good father. 1 through 7, Deb, when you get there, of uh, 1 Corinthians 8, please. Amen. Amen. As concerning therefore the eating of those things which are offered in sacrifice unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there are hmm. none other gods. For though there be that are for though there be that are called gods, right. That verse kills me right there. How be it that's, that knowledge is not in every man? As Brother Jonathan went through this morning, people don't know. Today, when you're talking to people, they don't know about the true and living God. You say the true and living God, they really do think for. I told you a story about the guy that I work with. He, he did the, well, he runs the, the commissary down in, uh, in Collins Aerospace. He's, of course, his name is Stu. It's awesome. He... he <laughs> What else would it be? Bread? No, his name's Stu. So he's down there, and, and he goes, and he witnessed to him before, talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, and he goes, he goes, hey, Dave. I'm like, yeah, Stu, what's going on? He goes, uh, yeah, my, uh, it was, this was Christmas time. You're, I don't know, six, seven years ago, pre-COVID. And uh, he goes, yeah, my, uh, my son comes up to me and, and, and says, hey, you know, what am I, what am I getting this year for, for Christmas? And Stu, this is what he said, he goes, well, he goes, uh, he goes, well, this is, this is not really, you're, th this is lost man talking. He goes, this is, well, this isn't really a day. It's, this, is, uh, this, is, this is God's birthday. And, he, and his son goes, you mean Thor? He didn't blink an eye. He wasn't laughing or being sarcastic. He wasn't trying to trap me in to get me all riled up. That's where you're at now. People think God is Thor and Mighty Mouse. and Honestly. They do, and when you say the true and living God, they have no idea, so you have to take more time with them than you did 40, 50 years ago, where people kind of, even as a lost Catholic, you knew there was a God. You knew that Christ died on a cross. You believed He rose from the dead. You just need to be convinced that, that was for you personally. You need to repent towards God and have faith to our Lord Jesus Christ. You're talking to people now that have no clue of God. And we just expect them to pray a prayer, and then they don't show up on Sunday. Well, where are they? Well, I'm not doubting Jesus Christ, but you kind of ran them right through that prayer, didn't you? Did you take any time to sit down and show them from the Word of God? And they're like, well, I'm not saying give them every verse on the deity of Christ. I don't get all that. But you got to show them that their sin's a problem, that God solved that problem with His Son's precious blood, the Lamb of God. And unless that clicks for them and they say, I believe that, that's 100% me, and I need that, I, I know for sure I'm the sinner God says I am. Until they get to that point or say something like that, what are you going to do? you got to kind of pray and leave it. 
for the next time instead of just running them through the puppy mill of Christianity. Oh, I got, I got one saved, man. Oh, where are they? And I, I get it. Things happen, man. I mean, Taylor led that girl to Christ on the street, man. She was very enthused about it, but she also was from a different town or city. We gave a phone number and all that stuff, but I mean, what, I, I get it. There's sometimes where you're just not going to have a chance to get people involved in the church, but if I know where one is, where they're living at, I'll tell them, hey, go check this pastor out or whatever the case might be. But uh, they, folks don't know. Brother Bob, you know this, you're out witnessing all the time. You, you, people don't know the true God. They're, they're thinking God is whatever shows up on their TV screen. You've got to take a little bit of time with them, but God said, no, there's no other God besides me. I'm talking true God. Uh, the God of this world is called, uh, uh, he's called the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 4. He's the God of this world, man. So there, there, is, there, is, a God out, there is a God out there fighting for the affections of people. Go to Daniel chapter 3, please. Daniel chapter 3, Brother Bert. Daniel 3, 26 to 30. Daniel 3, 26 to 30, please. I had to figure out it after Ezekiel, not before. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Oh, man. He's... 26 to 30? Y yes. <laughs> yeah, you, I'll tell you, man, you're... You're something uh, else uh, there. Uh. <laughs> then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth from the midst of the fire. That's pretty crazy. And the princes, governors, and captains, <coughs> and king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an heir of their head singed. Neither was their, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed. That's so cool, man. Man. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might <laughs> not serve, that they might not serve nor worship any god. That's pretty. Now, very quickly, it yielded their bodies. Do you not have a New Testament reference? Romans 12, 1 and 2? They're Old Testament saints in a fire, and they yielded their bodies. Yeah, and Romans 6 as well. I'm sorry, Brother Bert, go ahead, please. I don't like to distract you, you know that. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. And their houses shall be made a dumb <laughs> there is no other God Look at this. to deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. This guy's one of the most wicked, filthy, pagan kings ever. And he goes, yeah, there's no God but this one. There's no deliverer but this one. And if anybody goes against this God, I'll kill him. I'll chop them in pieces and make their house a dunghill. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. And then he says he'll send his angel. He knew Jesus Christ in the Old Testament and appeared as the angel of the Lord, but he's called the Son of God. And then what's crazy is in verse in chapter 4, what happens to Nebuchadnezzar? He ends up licking grass like an ox because he loses that understanding that there's only one true God. If you saw something like that, you'd think it would change your heart and your mind forever, but then he says, yeah, look at this great Babylon I've made. Wow, it's a pretty wonderful place. And then it takes God abasing him. And then he says, yeah, man, let me get back to where I was in chapter number three. There is no God but the God of Daniel. Pretty cool stuff, man. All right, there's no other Savior beside me. Look at Luke chapter number two, please. Luke two. Taylor, Luke two. Luke two, please. Eight through eleven. No pill crows, so you're all right. Go ahead. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, Amen. which shall be to all the people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you that you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Okay. I had you only go to 11, but you just took an extra one on it. Yeah, sorry. You had a little brain cramp. I understand. Now, you say, what did you bring that for? I know he's the king. I understand that. 
But did you see what God sent you in Luke chapter number 2, verse 11? Unto us is born this day in the state of David, a Savior. There's no God and there's no Savior but me. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't need a professor. You didn't need a scientist. You didn't need a financial advisor. You needed a Savior, and so didn't I. And there's only one Savior that fits that bill. His name's Jesus Christ. I'm not talking about getting saved from a car wreck or getting saved from a heart attack. Those things are wonderful. Or saved from drowning. But saved from the penalty of your sins. Saved from drowning in the lake of fire. That's the Savior you need, man. That's pretty cool. I like that. Find us is born this day in the city of David. That's, that's Brother Bert's favorite, Linus. He does, it's crazy. It's straight up King James, man. It's wild. Yeah. And because he quoted that right, he gets put in 2 Timothy 4. Linus, man. You, you knew that. You quote that right, I'll take your piano, your blankie, and I'll throw you in 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4. That blanket must stink, though. i got to tell you, man. 1 Timothy 4. I'm liking it, though. 1 Timothy 4. Karen, if you could. Karen, no cane tonight for, for Karen, man. Went to a Benny Hinn crusade earlier. She threw her cane away. She's like, I don't need no cane. Wow. <laughs> no cane, but she did have Abel. Anyway, 8 through 11. All right, go ahead. Uh, 8 through 11? Would you get caught up in the Benny Hinn moment or what? <laughs> Amen. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all expectation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust Look at this. God, who is the Savior of all Amen. Of those These things command He's the Savior of all men. Not just the elect, John Calvin, sorry. He will that all men be saved, not willing that any should perish. I love that verse. That doesn't mean universal salvation, folks. It means He's the Savior of all men, but thank God He put that rest of the verse in there. What's the rest of the verse say? Especially those that... You have to take part in believing that He is the only Savior that can save you. No other God, no other Savior. Look at what the Bible says over in Isaiah chapter 43, please. Isaiah 43, you're back over on the other side of town. You've got to keep Kenny and Estiana engaged. They're losing it over here on me. I've got to pull them in, man. It's going to rain anyway. We've got another three hours in here. Yeah, yeah you're like, nah, not happening. He is rumbling out there. Seven thunders utter their voices. Write down what they said. Nope, don't do it. 43, Brother Kenny, get 8 through 13, please. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be as assembled, mm -hmm. who among them can declare this, and show us former things. Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, it is true. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, That's a great and my verse. servant whom I have chosen. That ye may know Amen. and believe me, and understand that I am He. Before me there was no God for me, <laughs> neither shall there be after me. Wow. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me there is no Savior. That's awesome. I have declared and have saved, and have showed when there was no strange God among you. <laughs> Therefore, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. So if there was no strange God before, and He's the only Savior, where did the strange gods come from? There was no strange... You knew that before the strange gods showed up. Where did those strange gods come from? Sure, devils, spirits, sure. But how about the little dollies and the little statues and the stuff you were making over in Acts chapter number 9? Go ahead, Brother Kenny, please. Yea, before the day was I am he, and there is none that can de deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? What a great verse. Thank you, Brother Kenny. This is Bible, verse number 13. Yea, before the day was, 
I am He. That sounds exactly like John 8. Before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> that's, a, that's almost specific. I think that's, uh, was that John 8, 56? Let me give you the reference on that. Before Abraham was, I am. Let me give you the verse. Uh, it's 8. I'm sorry, it is uh, 8, 58. Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. That's a great concordant verse that God just put in there, 43, 13 of Isaiah. Yea, before the day was, I am He. Well, where'd God come from? I don't know. <laughs> everlasting. <laughs> Wherever everlasting is, that's where He came from. Will you believe something crazy like that? Compared to some of the stuff that people push in their science books. Yeah. Right on cue, Lord. Thank you very much. Okay. Before science books and all kinds of craziness and one-celled amoebas and you came from the primordial ooze, maybe you did. Seriously. Oh, what a crazy thing. Instead of just saying, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. The fourth word of the King James Bible is God. He expects His creatures that He made to believe that He is. Not this all crazy, weird, atheistic stuff. You have a question? Yeah. I know what I saw. It. Go ahead. For which one? The devils? Yeah. Oh, it's uh, 828 is where it starts. But the one that Deb got is the one I really wanted about in Luke, was it Luke 831? Yeah, Luke 831. Eight, I, I read like 33 talks about them being actually late. Right. Right, so it would be uh, the reference for the possessed man, and there's two in Matthew and Luke. There's only one in Mark. That's not a misprint. It's God in and Mark is more specific. He's usually straightway and immediately in Mark, and he usually will have some detail that the others will not. So Mark 5 picks one of the men to interact with the Lord, whereas there's really two there. So the reference is Matthew 8, 28 to 34 is where the first reference is, and the other one is Mark chapter 5, 1 through... Oh, somebody have it off the top. I think it's 1 through 8, but let me look. Is actually, I'm sorry, it's 1 through, man, 1 through 19. So it's Mark 5, 1 through 19, and the one in Luke 8, pretty cool. The deep and the lake and all that stuff. It all, you, you, those words don't, to me, they don't just happen. That's just for me, and not being smart when I say it, just to me, it doesn't, just doesn't happen. All right, Isaiah 45, quick. Isaiah 45, please. Uh, 858. Before Abraham was, I am. That's, um, well, verily, verily, I say that's uh, John 858. Before the day. <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. <laughs> oh, God popped up on the first day. No, no, no. no. I, I can't even, honestly, have you ever thought about pre Genesis 1 1? Have you ever kind of like spooled it up in your head and thought, what was the Lord doing before Genesis 1 1? That's weird, man kind of like fries you a little bit. You're like, what is he? Well, obviously, it had to be Lucifer, who was not the devil at the time, and the cherubs, and the seraphim, and the host, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 45, please. 20 to 22. Is this the earlier latter rain? I don't know which one it is. <laughs> 20 through... 22, if you could, Estiana. Assemble yourselves and come to the that are at peace with the nations. They have no knowledge but set up the limit of their graven images and pray unto a God that cannot save. Remember, there's no Savior beside me. They're praying to another God that can't save. Go ahead, please. And bring them near. Yea, let them take you together. Yeah. Who hath told us from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. Amen. A just God and a Savior. Bingo. There is none beside me. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God. And there is no God. <laughs> That'll get you into trouble over at your local, uh, your local mosque. Jude, please. Book of Jude. Back to Jude. Jude twice in a night. We've got to cut this out, man. Jude. 
Brother Paul, can you get Jude, please, uh, 20 to 25? Jude 20 to 25. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even. Uh, well, well, what was that, man? Did you, what, did you eat a habanero pepper or something, man? They're like, oh. Garment spotted by the flesh. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding glory. Here we go. There you go. Both now and ever. To the only wise God, our Savior. God, our Savior. Last one, Titus chapter number two. Titus two, please. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I like that. I needed a Savior. And he came by and said, yeah, you're a loser, but I'll take you in. Pretty cool, man. When the Savior reached down, yeah. Amen. Uh, Mo, Titus 2, 11, right to the end, 11 through 15, please. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously. Amen. 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 Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hmm. Amen. Our great God and Savior is coming for us. Well, I don't know if Jesus Christ is God or not. And I don't really like the punctuation there, and I don't like the conjunction. No, He's the great God and our Savior. That ties off with everything you just read over in Isaiah. We won't go there, man, for the sake of time, but in Revelation it says, Behold, I was dead, and I'm alive forevermore. If you go back to Isaiah, that same Alpha and Omega and all the beginning and the ending, you go back to Isaiah, it has almost the exact same wording. And when did God ever die? And the perfect plug-in is Jesus Christ is God, and he did die for you. It's Alpha and Omega beginning and the two match together in Revelation 1. When did God ever die? On the cross. 2,000 years ago, man. The only God, wise God and Savior. Thank you again, Father, for the night. Thank you for saving our souls from hell and washing us in your Son's precious blood. Thank you, Father, for redeeming us from all iniquities we've just read, uh, that we might be a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Father, whatever those works are, would you help us to do them with our whole heart, just as the way that, Father, we, that I like to serve sin, would we turn from that and, and serve you with more zeal and vigor, than we give to our flesh and to our sin. Thank you for being a great God and a great Savior and a great King. We thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen.